Jordan Travis gritting through it last week, practicing Wednesday, earning the start. Just how did he perform? How did he handle it? And what does it say about him developing in that sense of being able to battle through such things? Yeah, I mean, that's a kid who I think is is a pretty tough kid. I mean, I don't think he gets enough credit for how, how tough he is. I mean, I think he got knocked down, you know, in the 30s uh, last week, and he got up that same amount of time and uh, went out there. And when, when he had to make a play, he made a play. Uh, him, in terms of performing, I thought he did exactly what we wanted him to do uh, throughout the game. He managed the perimeter, which was which was the plan versus a true zone defense, being able to get some perimeter as a as a as a core base of them, a zone team that would hop into man to stop perimeter screens. Uh, he did a good job managing the perimeter uh, when the numbers were right, uh, and I mean, uh, on total, there were four plays, four and a half plays that I listed him as an MA that I think he can improve on. Uh, whether that was, you know, patience in the pocket on, on some of the third downs. Uh, but that's – people still got to remember, I mean, you're talking about a kid who's played, what, really six full football games in his career, you know, going out there and, and performing like that. That's not just because he played last year. Uh, when you talk about full games, like half to half, and when you combine all the halves he's played, he's really played about – six, maybe seven football games in his career. And uh, when he's played in those games, one way or another, we found a way to score. And one way or another, you know, we've won more uh, when he's been on the field. Stay over here for Brandon. Kind of going off that, Kenny, the way that Jordan is able to uh, put defenses in conflict as a runner, as a passer. Um, I guess, one, what does he do for you guys to schematically? And then two, how do teammates generally respond to him personality-wise and his skill set? Well, I think our, I think both the guys, I think teammates respond to McKenzie as well and his leadership and just what he's been through. So I don't want to put, you know, I don't want it to look like it's one down, the other up. I think both those guys have unique leadership abilities. I think what Jordan provides is, you know, anytime you play quarterback, you usually don't get, you know, the physical beat down that some of the other positions get on a day-to-day -day basis or on a, and throughout a game, you know, and that's a guy who's, who's getting that and getting up and then playing every snap. And I think the teammates respond to that. The teammates respond to him and they know, oh man, I missed a block and I let a guy free at our quarterback, he got crushed. Okay, he hops up and he says, it's okay, next play. And I think that is his leadership. He's not a guy who's going to be out there and rah-rah and yell, but he's a guy who's going to go out there and work. He's a guy who's going to go out there to compete. And his teammates know when he's back there, he can always make a play. And I think that hope, that belief that every time he takes a snap, it's never over till the whistle blows, I think that's something our, our team feeds off of. We'll go over to the right for Ira. You guys perform much better in situations, short yardage, red zone, um, didn't have as many penalties, things like that. What, what's been the key to improving in those areas? I think, you know, our guys, we've emphasized it and emphasized it all fall camp, and you can emphasize it in practice. But getting out there in, in a game setting and having the emotions of a game are different than a practice. So I think our guys just understanding, man, it – when we do get penalties, it is pretty hard to succeed. And then showing them and the teachable moments and building on it. And then us seeing, okay, even last week when we didn't finish drives and score, the lack of penalties allowed us to gain 450 something yards. You know, and I think they saw that we were close to that success because we didn't get penalties, we didn't get uh, takeaways, and we didn't turn the football over. So I think we're just, our guys are slowly and slowly learning how to play the game at a successful level. And on the same token, right, we're still making, you know, over 50% of our snaps. We still don't have 11 people doing the same thing. And that one person may not even be relevant to the play. He may be the backside receiver who's supposed to run a hitch when it's a give read every time. And we're not running it. And once we, we have to get to the point where all 11 people do the same thing. And we're not doing much right now. And we got to we got to find a way to get all 11 doing the same thing every single play. Yeah, Kenny, on the on the interception, um, number one, is that is that Jordan making – does he see that at the line? Are there a couple things he can do? And you had thrown a lot of those types of passes, and that was the only one that kind of intercepted. Did the kid just surprise Cam with the move he made? And also, if the ball does get completed, is it going to be a touchdown? Uh, I mean, that is what we've – you know, we work perimeter blocking. Uh, 
throughout summer, that was a, it's basically a step replace drill, which is a conditioning drill that we work uh, versus those looks pretty consistently. Um, anytime you're a spread offense, you know, you have to work that stuff. And for us, you know, the look we saw was cover zero. That was a cover zero team. He loved to bring cover zero. Uh, that was one of his favorite pressures. So they were bringing, it wasn't house blitz, but it was a, a cover zero box fit. The quarterback saw it because the cover zero box fit, he knew he had to take perimeter, which, would, which is why we had both of our running backs displaced. So we would put the ball in the running back's hand on the perimeter, just like if we were to run a toss play or run a counter and get a one-on-one -on -one with a safety at seven to eight yards. We had the look we wanted. Jordan made a good decision, and uh, we got to do a better job. Uh, our guys understanding how to, how, to, how to block those press players because if we do get the ball in our back's hands and we put him, you know, Ward one-on-one -on -one with a safety at eight yards with a cover zero run fit, uh, he makes one guy miss, he goes for 60. But, you know, that's the game and we got to do a better job making sure our guys understand what that defensive player is going to do and making sure we attack that guy and we don't, you know, finesse around him. Maybe a bit of a funny follow-up to that, but it seemed like, I mean, with how many screens you were running and downfield runs from Jordan, there was a lot of ass with them with the perimeter blocking, and that was kind of lapsed, but there were a lot of promising moments. I guess how much growth have you seen there from the wide receivers and tight ends this year? Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was up and down. I thought, you know, some plays, I mean, Keyshawn Helton, I could point one out on uh, the flat route uh, to Cam McDonald on the sideline and Pokey on that play. You know, Keyshawn takes a guy who's, you know, 35 pounds heavier than him, and he drives him to the ground. And then Pokey's outside battling his butt off uh, to allow a flat route to go for 14 yards for a touchdown. And uh, then you have plays where, you know, it's, it's not quite that pretty. And I think that's where I challenged our guys is if we're going to continue to see man coverage and we're going to continue to see teams that play us in cover zero fits, you know, if they're not going to press us, which teams aren't, they're still playing soft. We have to be able to throw perimeter screens and win one-on-ones in the perimeter because we're not going to have the enough time to throw the ball vertically down the field if teams are pressuring us playing zero from soft coverage. There's a balance. You have to force teams to come up and press you in man-to-man -man if teams are going to zero run fit. That way you can get the ball out quick and get on the defender's heels. So we got we to find that balance offensively, and uh, that's the challenge I put out to our, our perimeter guys is we've got to get better blocking on the perimeter to force people to step up, challenge us at the line, so we can help them get the ball vertically down the field more when teams are attacking us up front with pressures, and especially when they get into the cover zero pressures. Can you mention Keyshawn Helton, the way he was blocking? Can you talk just a little bit about his response from, say, the last couple of weeks and to kind of step up and, and not just block well, he also has a touchdown as well, and just how he performed? Yeah, I mean, Keyshawn's a guy who just, he's consistent. You know, and we talk, I talk about that word all the time, either consistent or explosive, consistent or explosive, and that's a guy who's consistent. You know what you're going to get out of him. I have no worry ever when he's on the field that he's not going to do his job and he's not going to do it to the best of his ability. And uh, that's why on that, the, the touchdown he caught, you know, we ran a few of the perimeter screens earlier and they were triggering on him because he was blocking the dude. And that dude, that dude triggered heavy on the play prior. We came right back with the stutter and uh, he's open, but he's only open because he was willing to put in the dirty work the play before. And those are the plays that we've got to make consistently as an offense is we've got to put in the dirty work in order to get wide open you know that's what we're trying to help our guys get to that point and Keyshawn putting the dirty work putting enough dirty work through earlier in that game to get that open so that's a testament to him and the work that he's put in go back over to the right for Ira. just because of circumstances just with McKenzie's situation it's just kind of there's so much spotlight on him uh, in preseason and then early in the season and then you know when he would get introduced the crowd would get excited I mean his story is an amazing story um, how has Jordan handled that, and, and how is he? What have you seen from him, just kind of uh, eliminating that that outside noise or whatever? Yeah, McKenzie. I mean, his story is remarkable. I mean, the, the it's just remarkable. I mean, I text him after the game that I'm blessed that he's a part of this team because he's made us better. He's made Jordan better. He's made the other quarterbacks better. He's made me better. He's made the teammates better. Just in terms of the overall culture of how it's supposed to look, uh, and he's. Jordan's number one fan. I mean, he's the guy who's helping him in between the series, talking to him, building him up. Uh, I mean, he's just 
remarkable. There's there's not enough positive things you can say about him. And with Jordan, how Jordan's handled it, obviously, I mean, it's never fun, you know, if if you're not the guy people want. I mean, there's no way, there's no way to avoid that, right? It's not like, oh, who cares what all the other 100,000 think? Like, that's not real. But he's done a remarkable job just continuing to work and continuing to fight to get to the point that when it was his opportunity, right, his opportunity, he made the most of it. And that's really all you can hope for in, in anybody is that when it's their opportunity, they make the play. And that's what winning football is. All the X's, all the O's, right, half of four of our games have come down to one play. Is there a, a guy on the field who you know is out there who's going to make the play? You know, two weeks prior, we didn't make that play. This last week, Jordan made that play. Whatever that is, whatever position group that is, when you play in close games, who's going to make a play? Because that's it. And Jordan made that play. And because of that, it put us in position to obviously kick game-winning field goal, and he made that play. It's a defense, special teams, and offense those last three drives to get it accomplished. And just following up on that, there were definitely some moments where there was at least one moment where you know, somebody, uh, maybe a GA or a staff member was talking to Jordan and like McKenzie kind of like pulled him aside, wanted to talk to him himself. Like, is he is he giving more coaching advice, like what he's seeing, or is it more, you know, kind of co just being in those situations? To be honest, I don't know. I don't know what they talk about half the time, but they're always talking. I mean, I, I wish I could tell you what their little side conversations are, but uh, I do know both of them genuinely care about each other and they want each other to succeed. You know, and that's the culture we're trying to create is, you know, you can only be the best version of yourself if the people around you are the best version of themselves. And the better you make the person next to you, the better you're going to be. And whether that means you're playing, whether that means you're not playing, it really doesn't matter. Because, I mean, we, that's just the culture we're trying to create here is to be the best we can possibly be. And uh, especially in that quarterback room, I think uh, both those guys have built a pretty pretty unique and special bond for only being around each other for you know nine months now. Kenny, uh, for the first time, you guys had almost close to what you projected to be your starting offensive line. And I, I granted, I know a lot of those guys aren't even close to 100% right now, but is that giving you a little bit more freedom in terms of play calling when you've got a healthier offensive line? And as they get healthier, will that free you up even more to do more things? I think it's, it's just much matchup based. You know, obviously getting those guys back is, you know, critical for us. But at the same token, that Syracuse, that Syracuse defensive front is good. Like, I know they're good. And what they do defensively, attacking and pressuring 50% of the snaps, you, you don't get many three-man rushes. And there were times where, you know, we got three-man rushes and, uh, you know, we got beat. But that's, that's, that's the game, you know. And we got to do maybe half-line slide more, help our guys, not give them as many one-on-ones. I got to do a better job uh, protecting those guys up front a little bit. But uh, at the same token, getting those guys back is going to be huge for us. Uh, Scheme-wise, that's going to obviously open us up, but it's also going to be limited based off of who we're facing and the strengths and weaknesses of the team that we're facing. This last week, we kind of knew that uh, protection was going to be an issue because they had a guy who was top five in sacks and their pressure amount was so high, we knew they weren't going to play us and not pressure. So uh, we, we were pretty prepared for that. So we were trying to get the ball out quick and avoid negatives because we felt like if we avoided negatives, we could score into the 30 range and potentially more. And uh, didn't always look pretty, but at the end of the day, it, it, it got the job done. Right, we got time for a couple more. We'll go to your left for Jerry. Yep. Um, Coach, you, you now face North Carolina this coming week. And uh, what, what do they offer by comparison to Syracuse defensively or other teams you faced? Yeah, uh, they're a mixed front, three down, four down. A uh, little bit more three down than they are four down. Uh, a, good amount of, a good amount of pressure, uh, but not quite as much as we saw uh, this last week. So a little, a little bit different in terms of how they pressure. I mean, like I said last week going into the game, it was, uh, it was more create as much chaos as possible from that rocky long tree uh, to stop the run. And anybody who knows that tree, they don't let people run on them for the most part. Whereas uh, this is a more uh, create a four-man front, 
whether we're popping from the field, we're popping from the boundary, we're going to try to get to a four-man rush as much as possible, and we're going to try to do that through disguise. Uh, and then they have, you know, they've recruited well at the, in the defensive backfield, and they're going to let those guys play ball a little bit. They're going to, I mean, this team more than other teams that we've seen on film plays press man to man and will challenge you at the line of scrimmage. And uh, it's going to be a good challenge for our wideouts. And um, I'm, I'm excited to go down there and play up there, I guess, over there, whichever direction that is. Last one will be Brendan over here to the left. You mentioned that Syracuse isn't a team that, that has allowed a lot of teams to run the ball. You guys managed to run for almost 250 yards. What, what do you think you did particularly well as a unit uh, getting success on the ground? Can you talk about just the personnel usage with, with Trey Sean being moved all over the place, Jay Sean being moved all over the place, and how you use those guys? Yeah, I mean, we had about 100, I mean, 104 th or what, 15 of those were, you know, truly drop back passes turned into scrambles in terms of, in terms of rushes. But I do think the extension of putting those running backs out there wide and having that threat that we could get those guys the ball uh, through perimeter screen game, force teams to play more man, which honestly, when we're in detached sets, anytime you force teams to play man and you have a guy like Jordan back there, somebody has to account for Jordan, which means you now get your number back in the running game, which then in tunes forces teams to play cover zero if they want to press down on the running backs. So I think having Jordan in there and having those guys out there, it really puts a lot of strain on the defense to prevent the perimeter screen as much as possible. The only way to do that is to play man. Well, if you play man, you can't account for Jordan unless you play cover zero. So that balance of putting those guys out there, I think really opened up the run game because it puts a little bit of strain on a defense in terms of who do they want to take away, how do they want to take that guy away, and then what are they giving up? And uh, once again, that's the challenge is we got to be better blocking on the perimeter. That way we can continue to take those to get defenses to step up so then we can then take those shots, uh, which we try to take uh, two to three of them early in the game. But uh, it was just difficult with their pressure to, uh, to get those off. So we got away from those pretty early. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you all. Have a good day.